I don't know that the women's game can continue to be as inactive as has happened. We must now look to drive it forward. Women's cricket needs to get going again now, just as the men's are beginning to get going. The women's game now has to have that same benefit. Every time I hear the term glass ceiling, it upsets me because I'm a, I'm a big one that everyone should be treated equally. But just the fact that we have that history, whether it's gender-based, whether it's race-based, it, it grates at me because I have, I have two daughters. One is 19, one is 11. And of course, my wife. And I always sort of look at it through this, this lens, this prism. If my wife is traveling somewhere on her own, I would like to know that wherever she goes, she's treated fairly and objectively. I take my two daughters to sport and I would want them to experience the same opportunities that a male sports person would experience or someone of the other gender in their place of work when they grow up. So I am not fighting. I don't want the fight to be for a glass ceiling. I just think that everyone should be treated equally. I, I hope that administrators would put as much focus, as much focus and resources now into the women's game. And I know a lot of people are trying. I know the West Indies have been better. Australia are a shining example of how to do it. England have been good, New Zealand, etc. Pakistan are starting to pick up steam. So I hope that this, the, the stress on the development, I want to see another Shefali Verma somewhere. Uh, a Rodriguez coming through, a Smriti Mandana, a Meg Lanning, more Meg Lannings. So we have to infuse more resources economically and otherwise into the grassroots game. Make sure that we get it going again. Give it whatever it's, it's needed, it's needed. We have that West Indies England series that was just concluded. And that was, it's, it wasn't a trial run, but it served as the first cricket played behind, international cricket played behind closed doors uh, post pandemic. So now the women's game and the administrators can look at this without endangering anyone's lives and say, ah, we can play cricket safely. So now it's time that we get back on the bicycle now and start putting things in place because I don't know that the women's game can continue to be as inactive as has happened. We must now look to drive it forward, even if it's for bilateral tours, because we know that we can do it safely. Australia does sport well, for example. I mean, the way they promote it, the facilities that they offer, um, the marketing of, of sport in general, and women's cricket in particular, is, is like no other. It's second to none, the financial investment they make. And they are really a good and shining example of how to do it and why they've had as much success. They, they've been visionary. They've been out front in their investment in the women's game. So it's no surprising the success they've had, followed by England and, and Australia, exam, for example. Uh, England and New Zealand, I should say. So I think India, if we start speaking specifically about India, India have the economic resources to follow that template and take it to another level. And that would be my my shout out to the administrators there. There is a great opportunity to take the women's game globally to another level with enough investment and enough vision. And I want to encourage them to seize that opportunity because it will grow the game there like no other.